All right, I I think this might be the last video I I do on this subject. What's up, guys? HBO, the commentators equal propaganda and bias towards cash cows and boxing, like Manny Pacquiao, for example, or like Oscar De La Hoya, for example. HBO will always be biased towards cash cows, like 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 a Canelo Alvarez, like a Julio Cesar Chavez, those types of fighters. HBO will always be biased towards them. Understand HBO commentary equals biased propaganda. And when, what, how do I support that? Well, consider, other than Floyd Mayweather Jr., the only other developed cash cow in boxing, HBO's sort of second child, is Manny Pacquiao. And uh, Manny Pacquiao makes HBO the most money when he fights and when he wins. Other than Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao is the one that makes HBO the most money. So you see, even when Manny Pacquiao might be losing, the commentators have a financial incentive that, that comes down from their company because they represent HBO. They have to portray the fight as, as, as their fighter is winning or else, or else... Pacquiao loses stock. You see, when Manny Pacquiao's stock goes down, HBO's stock goes down. You see, because since HBO makes so much money off Pacquiao, they need Pacquiao to keep winning. Unlike Bob Arum, because Bob Arum has the winner and the loser. So he has Pacquiao and he has Timothy Bradley. So Bob Arum doesn't care. HBO has the right to care because... uh. They they don't see Timothy Bradley as a big draw, but they do see Manny Pacquiao, so they have to favor Manny Pacquiao. Make sense? HBO commentary always favors fighters who will take bigger risks and be in entertaining action fights. And Manny Pacquiao, if you know what his style, his fighting style is like, it's an action fight style. It's it's a fight of the year type style. When Manny Pacquiao was in his prime. Fighting guys like Eric Morales, fighting guys like uh, Juan Manuel Marquez early in, in his career, or you know in, in the middle of his career, those were action fights. Those were fight of the year candidates, and you know HBO will give you more credit for that because you're bringing in more fans for having great fights, much like other fighters who HBO has televised, like Arturo Gatti like Juan Diaz, and like Oscar De La Hoya. Okay, so speaking on biased commentators, Harold Letterman, of all people. This is probably, you know, this is, in terms of scoring fights, he has worked for HBO for the longest time, scoring fights. And he's the most repetitive commentator I've ever seen. He says the same things over and over and over again. And he scores and he basically favored fighters. He favored Manny Pacquiao one because his company has the financial incentive to portray Manny Pacquiao as as he's winning the fight. Two because he he likes Manny Pacquiao's style. He likes the speed he likes his courage, and, and, he, and he likes his power. He favors power punches over pure boxers. And, um, you know, it's like it's like he'll say, oh, man, Pacquiao's landing a great left hand, but what about his ring generalship? What about his uh, his uh, clean, effective punching when, when a lot of these punches are missing? You know, he doesn't mention these things. Harold Letterman is, you know, he has good, he has good and bad days. Like like all human beings, but he has a lot more bad days than most television judges. Uh, like a Teddy Atlas, who who's always who, no matter what he always keeps it real. That's why I like Teddy Atlas. But you know the one thing that really struck me was Jim Lampley after the after the decision was called. 
he was just like, he was like, you know, I don't know how this happened, but I know, in my opinion, Harold Letterman is the best judge ever, <laughs> that I've ever seen, you know, like, like, I love you, Harold, <laughs> I'm like, what? And, you know, he says that with so much enthusiasm. Like, of course he's biased. Of course, he's been around Harold Letterman forever. He's worked with him, you know, for years and years. So, yeah, he's going to think he's a great judge. Even though he's screwed up a lot of, uh, a lot of fights, too. You know, listen to. But I think there was clear favoritism in this fight, especially in the first three rounds, which I thought Bradley won convincingly. Uh, they scored it for Pacquiao. They were close, but I thought you could give at least one one of the first three to to Bradley, especially the last rounds, rounds nine to twelve, which I thought were pretty clear cut rounds for Bradley. He scored every single round for uh Pacquiao. So I just I, I to me it's clear favoritism, and and that's just. That's just the way it is, man. HBO, they they favor their own company. They favor the cash cows in boxing. Like Jim Lampley, Max Kellerman. You know, I used to like Max Kellerman. I used to like Jim Lampley. Jim Lampley's a great play-by-play -play guy. But recently, he's been messing up. Like, he's been, uh, he's been getting excited about missed punches and blocked punches so often that it's just getting annoying. Like, and, and, you know, I like Max Kellerman, but it feels like he's been compromised just by being associated with HBO. He's just been compromised as a journalist, and uh, he just follows this groupthink opinion with uh, Jim Lampley and, and Larry Merchant, or Jim Lampley and uh, Emmanuel Stewart, or just along with Jim Lampley. Um, and just, just for example, uh, neither of them gave credit to Timothy Bradley for having a great defense. Only Emmanuel Stewart said anything about any, said good things about Timothy Bradley's defense. Additionally, just just to take an example, in the ninth round, where in the beginning Pacquiao misses a straight left, Lampley gets so excited he's like, "There you go, that's the that's the fight. That's what Lampley says." Pacquiao launching and landing straight left. And and he missed that shot clearly. Clearly missed. It, it was either blocked or missed completely. And Lampley acts like it landed. Okay, he let that slide. Now, still in the ninth round, uh, from 1 minute 18 seconds, starting from there, to about 49 seconds, Bradley basically has a great series of punches, and he lands about 14 shots on Manny Pacquiao from a minute 18 to 49 seconds of the ninth round. And what happens is there is no commentary at all. The round during that time, it's silent. The commentators aren't saying anything uh, complimentary towards uh, Bradley's offense. And in fact... It was only until 45 seconds into uh, left in the ninth round when Bradley throws a right hand and it's blocked by Manny Pacquiao. It's out that, that that the punch is blocked, you know. So he doesn't point out the positive; he points out the negative. Oh, oh, and that punch is blocked by uh, by Pacquiao. So even when Pacquiao's getting hit, they're not saying anything, and then they decide to speak up when when Pacquiao. Uh, finally blocks a shot. And then at the end of the round, Kellerman goes on to say, uh, you know, hey, uh, well, you know, this is what it, I, I don't know what it feels like when, when you're in your prime uh, of your life and you're fighting a guy like Manny Pacquiao where he might be vulnerable and your best just isn't good enough. Like, and he's just going on about, like, like he just doesn't think Bradley's doing enough to win. When I thought he won the ninth round. It was close. I'll admit it was a close round, but I thought uh, Bradley was outworking Pacquiao. He did enough to win the ninth round. So that's just one example. You could go into each and every round and find examples like this on how uh, the commentators were biased. But just another aspect of it is 
much like when Oscar De La Hoya, it really reminds me of De La Hoya, uh, De La Hoya versus uh, Felix Sturm, where De La Hoya with flurry after flurry, and like five out of six punches were blocked, you know, six out of seven punches were blocked, but the crowd would go crazy, and and the commentators would get excited, but you know what, they were actually pointing out that a lot of the shots were blocked, that's the thing. You know, once upon a time, HBO commentators were not so biased towards the cash cows. But now, it's like it's like it's a brand new business. And we have to support Manny Pacquiao, win or lose. We have to support him. And that's exactly what's going on. Because at the end of the fight, they just sounded like, like, like they were, they were, they were big Manny Pacquiao fans that found out their favorite fighter lost. And, and after that, they just sounded pissed off because because their favorite fighter lost. You know, they just sounded like fans rather than neutral commentators, and that's something we have to separate because uh, because if you're commentating, you have to be a neutral observer. You can't show favoritism towards one fighter or the other. But these HBO commentators do it all the time, and you know I I wish the fight was on Showtime because maybe we would have got a fair balanced opinion. That's my take on it. Take care, guys.